The love of God, the faith of Jesus, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you. Welcome to worship with the First Presbyterian Church of Beacon, New York, where together we are bridging worlds, encountering God, and healing lives. Whoever you are, wherever you are, and whatever your background, we are glad you have joined us and hope you find just what your soul needs today. If you have a candle with you, we invite you to light it now as a reminder of the light of Jesus in all times and places. We continue with our prayer of confession. Holy and merciful God, in your presence we confess our sinfulness, our shortcomings, and our offenses against you. You alone know how often we have sinned in wandering from your ways, in wasting your gifts, in forgetting your love. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we are ashamed and sorry for all we have done to displease you. Forgive our sins and help us to live in your light and walk in your ways for the sake of Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. If you have water in a container, we invite you to pour the water as a reminder of the grace and power of baptism. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone. A new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Amen.
shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine, but God has called me here below. Good morning, friends. Look at this cool toy I have. You hold it like this, and then you tip the top, and it goes like that. And you can do it over and over again. Maybe you have one of these at your home, too. It has a special name, it's called a Jacob's Ladder and it gets its name from someone in the Bible. His name was Ladder. No, just kidding. His name was Jacob. And he has lots and lots of interesting stories about him in the Bible. He really loved his family, but he also fought with his brother a lot. Maybe you can relate to that. Uh, he was kind of a trickster. Um, there's an interesting story behind that one too. Um, but today, I want to tell you about a really amazing dream that Jacob had. And it has to do with this Jacob's ladder. So Jacob had to take a long, long, long journey. And along the way, he got really tired and needed to rest. So he found a nice, comfy rock. Yeah, I know, a rock for a pillow. And took a little snooze with his head on the rock. I know I wouldn't want to use a rock for a pillow either. But anyway, he had a really wild dream and he dreamt that there was this tall, 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 tall ladder reaching all the way up to heaven and that angels were going up and down the ladder all the way up to heaven and back to earth. If that wasn't amazing enough, then in his dream, he got a very special message from God. God reminded Jacob of the promise that God had made to Jacob's family a long time ago before he was even born. And part of the message was that God said, know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go. Well, Jacob woke up from that dream amazed and decided that he needed to mark the place where he had come so close to God and had that dream. He always wanted to remember. So he took his comfy little rock pillow and he used that as a spot to mark where he had his dream. And he poured some special oil on it. And then he gave the place a brand new name. He called it Bethel which means house of God. So just like God promised Jacob in his dream, God promises us that God will always be with us too. And we can feel really good about that promise because God always keeps God's promises. So if you have a Jacob's Ladder toy at your house, you can remember the story and God's promise whenever you play with it. But if you don't, that's okay, because I know how to make a Jacob's Ladder with paper so you can make your own. All you need are two pieces of paper and some tape. And you want to cut your paper into long strips, have your grown-ups help you. And then you want to tape them together perpendicular like this. Not like this, but perpendicular like this. Tape them together. 
and then start folding your paper like this. Like that. And then do the other one and fold it like that. And then do the other one and fold it like that. So keep folding back and forth until you get to the end. I'm going to go quick just to kind of show you that it doesn't have to be perfect. It still works. Once you get to the end, put another piece of tape to hold it in place. And then, look at that. Yeah. Now I made mine just out of plain old computer paper, but you could make yours out of construction paper or any other wrapping paper, or anything interesting that you have at your house, or you could use computer paper but decorate it. You could maybe add, make strips extra, extra long so that you can make your Jacob's Ladder tall, 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 like Jacob's Ladder in his dream. But the point is that when you play with your Jacob's Ladder, whether it's your paper one or if you have the toy, the point is to remember God's promise that God is always with you. So let's pray about it. Dear God, thank you for promising to always be with us. In Jesus' name, Good morning. Our scripture reading this morning is Genesis chapter 28, verses 10 to the 17th verse. Hear now God's word for you this day. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night, because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south, and all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! There is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. In just a little while, we will sing a hymn, a beloved hymn, at least for me and I hope for you. It is well with my soul. That hymn was written by Horatio G. Spafford. After his four daughters died when an ocean liner they were traveling on collided into an iron sailing vessel in 1873. His wife, Anna Spafford, was found nearly unconscious clinging to a piece of record wreckage. When the 47 survivors landed in Cardiff, Wales, she cabled her husband these words, saved alone. 
Mr. Spafford boarded another ocean liner to meet his wife. As the ship floated atop the ocean on a cold December night, he found it too difficult to sleep. As he tossed and turned, he found himself mumbling, it is well, let God's will be done. Out of the reality of his deep loss came the words to the beloved hymn, it is well with my soul. The most beloved hymns that have stood the test of time are beloved because they are born out of real life experience and out of a deep and abiding faith. As I read Horatio Spafford's story, it eerily reminded me of the duck boat that sank in Branson, Missouri on July 21st in 2019, killing 17 people. Nine of them were members of Tia Coleman's family. She lost her husband, Glenn, 40 years old, sons, Evan, seven, and Reese, nine, her one-year-old daughter, Arva, as well as her in-laws, Horace and Belinda, 70 and 69, sister-in-law, Angela, 45, and her two-year-old son, Maxwell, and an uncle, Erwin, at 76. The only survivors of the Coleman family that day were Tia, and her 13-year-old nephew. The story behind it as well with my soul is just as important as the hymn itself, as it testifies to a man whose faith told him, God never lets us go. The same message we heard in our Genesis text this morning. As he stopped at a place along the way and laid his head down on a stone to sleep, Jacob has a beautiful dream. Angels going up and down a ladder as if they were connecting heaven and earth right there at the place where Jacob was. In this dream, the Lord stands beside him. The Lord didn't send a message like a text or an email. The Lord didn't make a phone call or set up a Zoom meeting like we might do today. No, the Lord stands right there beside Jacob, as close as you and I are right now. Think about that. The Lord standing right next to you. Seriously, seriously, think about how you are feeling today. What burdens are you carrying? What circumstances followed you to church this morning? What are the things you have been trying to get rid of? How does that make you feel when you just can't get it to go away? Whatever the it is, Jacob's dream reminds us that no matter how lost we are, God is standing beside us. No matter how defeated we may feel, when we cannot see two feet in front of us, God is standing beside us. When we are certain we have lost everything and there is no future for us, God is standing beside us. When our sin overtakes our lives and we are absolutely certain we are in control. God is standing beside us. When our breath is almost gone, God is standing beside us. This hymn and this scripture together are beautiful sentiments and fill us with hopes when we ourselves are faced with un insurmountable odds. But if we are truly to embrace the breath of them, they must be more, more than words. In the dream, God not only stood beside Jacob, but tenderly said, know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. 
Despite wrestling an angel and demanding a blessing, Jacob's burden of his sin against his dying father and brother must have been weighing heavy. He may have thought there would never be a gift of an inheritance for him. But in a dream, God reminds Jacob that the promises of land and descendants were not only for his ancestors, but for him as well. God's promises are are sure and certain. They transcend generations. Jacob would receive land and his sons would become the house of Israel. But what about the gift of descendants? To be surrounded by family is indeed a gift, and in ancient days, descendants were needed to work the land and pass down the land. But that isn't all. God's promise of descendants was a gift of community, community for us all, a promise that we would never be alone in this world or in the next. And thousands of years later, We are here reading this same text in order to know that we, like Jacob, through the long line of ancestors, we too have received God's blessing of one another. We are blessed by God that we may go and bless others. I honestly don't know if the story of Horatio Spafford as I shared it with you this morning is true. But what I do know is that he penned a hymn that has blessed people for generations. And out of the Spafford family tragedy came words of hope and healing. Words of blessing to remind us of a God who stands with us throughout the ages in every time and place. Sometimes it is difficult for us to remember God is indeed with us, especially when we have experienced such deep loss. Sometimes we need to read scripture over and over and over and over and over and sing a hymn all day long to help us remember, to help us believe the words can be true for us. But let us not forget, when we receive a blessing, we are to be a blessing. The blessings of God aren't to be put under a bushel or hoarded in a closet for safekeeping. The blessings of God are to be shared with God's people. And when a sister like Tia Coleman goes on national television like she did in 2019, sharing her deepest loss and sorrow, the rest of us, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob better show up and stand beside her so people like her can remember God is standing with her too. And in her story, Indiana State Police Superintendent Doug Carter did just this. A reporter noted that he quietly paid his respects to the family at the funeral and took a seat in the back of the church, bowing his head to pray. Carter didn't know the family, but he said he felt called to be there. And he was quoted as saying, this is unimaginable pain for these families and this community. But their faith and their kindness to others had moved him so deeply. He told the family members that they are inspiring the nation and they were an incredible thing to witness. That, my friends, is a public witness to God's promises for us. In Tia Coleman's unimaginable sorrow, the loved ones of her family were witnessing to a community by their kindness and faith. 
It is so easy to judge. It is so easy to let our anger get the better of us. It is so easy to lash out and think others are not understanding us. But when we testify to the living God out loud, not only with our words, but with our actions, others see God too. When we don't have the strength on our own, it is the testimony of others that give us the strength to say, it is well with my soul. And in an interview with the Indy Star shortly after the tragedy, Tia was asked how she was doing. She answered once again through her tears that mostly there was silence in her life. But she followed that up by sharing that she received so many cards from people she did not know who told her that she had renewed their faith in God. She couldn't see that and she wasn't sure how that could possibly be true. But Tia said if there was a blessing in any of this, she guessed that it was as a human race, we desperately needed each other. Amen.
whether in person or online. Let us take a moment to remember that each week we gather in worship, we offer our whole selves to God to glorify and honor and give thanks for all we have received. Part of our thanks includes the gifts of our time and our financial gifts. We pray this prayer of dedication for our offerings. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. We bow before you and thank you for the privilege to participate in your acts of kindness and love here on earth. May these gifts truly become instruments of your purposes here in our church, our community, and around the world. Amen. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Thank you for joining us in worship today. You are invited to come over to the church lawn immediately following worship this morning for a picnic on the lawn to reconnect with other First Presbyterian families. Please bring your own seating and picnic lunch. We hope to see you there. As always, if there's any way First Presbyterian can be of assistance to you, please contact the church office at office at beaconpresbychurch.org or call 845-831-5322. And if you would like to support the ongoing ministry of First Presbyterian Church, you can send a donation to 50 Liberty Street, Beacon, New York, 12508, or give an online contribution through our website, beaconpresbychurch.org. Stay connected to the life and people of FPC by joining our First Presby Community Facebook group, as well as sign up to receive our weekly email newsletter. And now, a blessing. May you be at peace wherever you are. Remember those who are out in the world. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And wherever you are, may the love of God the faith of Jesus, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. And let all God's people say, Amen.
Amen. May he rise in us again.